Okay, right now I'm going to show you the clearest screen capture video you've ever seen on YouTube. And the reason that this is the clearest screen capture video you've ever seen on YouTube is because I use the strategies, uh, what I call method one, from OptimizeYourVideo.com. And right now I'm capturing this video with a software uh, called Cam Studio, which is free screen capture software from CamStudio.org. And the truth is, even though I'm going to capture a little video and show you what settings I would use if I was using Camtasia Studio, which I actually don't prefer, uh, I prefer Cam Studio. Uh, the truth is you're going to get the same quality video capture whether you use the free screen capture software or the paid screen capture software. Now, a lot of people are probably choking on that and uh, probably think that's a pretty silly statement, but it's absolutely true. Uh, you are not going to get any better quality video out of Camtasia Studio than you can with Cam Studio from camstudio.org, which is free open source software. And if you're wondering, well, Camtasia Studio has the cool zoom and pan features, well, you know, right now I'm using pan, and guess what? In one click of a mouse, I've got zoom. And I can show you exactly what I'm looking at, and I see it in real time magnified, so I know what it's going to look like in post after I produce the video. And so that's very important. So let me show you really quick the only things that I would worry about in Camtasia Studio. So I pop open the Camtasia Studio Record, and Camtasia Studio Recorder, uh, basically there's only a couple of areas I worry about. I go to Tools, I go to Options, and I'm going to worry about the output. I always save it as an AVI. I never, ever, 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 ever encode a video with Camtasia Studio simply because it's not a very good encoding software. There's much better solutions that are uh, very cheap and affordable that will give you better quality video uh, and video that you can deal with a lot better. I always save as an AVI. Uh, another reason that I save as an AVI uh, besides wanting to have a master file to convert and compress using a better uh, compressor. I save it as an AVI because I like to be able to edit my video in another software that was actually designed for editing. Uh, Cam Studio, they kind of design it, they want you to do everything in Cam Studio. They want you to edit your software there, they want you to, to put the audio in and do everything else in Camtasia Studio, and it's not really that great for doing that. You know, it's pretty good for what it's designed for, but it's not really an all-purpose software. If you want to combine live motion video with screen capture video, there's a couple of problems that you can run into. One of those is blurriness, and another one is flicker. And uh, both of those can be avoided if you don't follow the instructions that Camtasia Studio suggests, uh, which they suggest recording your whole screen and letting their zoom and pan automation uh, do the process. I tell you that you probably should never capture a video, uh, lar well, if you want to add it to live motion video and combine the two, don't ever capture one larger than 720 by 480. Uh, I personally don't think you should ever capture a screen capture video larger than 800 by 600, especially if you're going to embed it on a page. Uh, embedding an 800 by 600 video on a page is kind of outrageous. Uh, a lot of people do it, but I prefer to keep my videos at 640 by 480 or smaller, and that way it just allows me to focus more in certain areas. So always save as an AVI. That's, that's my number one rule. Always save as an AVI so I can edit it later in professional editing software and so I can encode it using uh, a better, more professional uh, encoding software. Uh, now, if I go to the video configuration, the only other thing I worry about here is the frame rate, uh, 10 frames per second. With screen capture software, you don't really need uh, a high frame rate. Um, basically, you just need to, to, you don't have to have 30 frames per second because you're not, have a lot of motion. You don't have a lot of motion going on here. So 10 frames per second is plenty. Uh, you can go 15, you can go 20, uh, but you know, generally 10 frames per second is, is right about where you want to be with screen capture uh, video. Here you choose the video compression. You'll see right now it's set to Microsoft Video One codec, which is basic uh, you know, codec for screen capture that everybody has on their computer. Uh, but if you click on that, then we have a drop down. We have some choices of the different codecs they have installed on this computer. Uh, MSU screen capture lossless codec is actually better than TechSmith screen capture codec. Um, and, you know, another thing you have to be aware of is that if you're using some of the encoding uh, strategies that we suggest in the Optimize Your Video Package, uh, you, you need to make sure that whatever encoder you're using, and we suggest several different options, both free and paid, uh, you need to make sure you're using the right codec um, for what you want to accomplish. Microsoft Video One is a safe codec to use. Um, MSU Screen Capture Lossless Codec is the best quality. TechSmith is pretty good quality as well. Uh, okay, so that's that's that for that and now I'm gonna go up here to the audio 
In the audio tab, uh, when you're choosing your recording device, you just need to make sure that in this drop down here, uh, the, the device that you're using for recording your audio is selected. And uh, here's your vo volume slider if you want to control the volume input for the sound level in your computer. And when you're recording for video, any type of video screen capture, uh, the general rule of thumb is if you have your computer speakers plugged in, if, if your speaker is turned up to uh, a third of the volume and it sounds comfortable, you can hear yourself, it's not too loud, then you've probably got uh, pretty good audio. But if it's blasting at a third, um, or if it's getting kind of uh, uh, some static and stuff in there, then you've got your input volume turned up way too big. Audio format, for me, that doesn't matter so much when I'm capturing. I am going to want to capture a good quality audio, but it doesn't matter simply because later after I take this AVI, I'm going to encode it and I'm going to actually set my audio format to a compre compressed format using an MP3 compression with the audio. And I'm going to, so I'm going to do that later. So when I convert the video to flash or to MLV or whatever I'm converting it to for my use later, I'm actually also going to compress the audio. So, you know, for the audio format, PCM is perfectly fine for capture. Uh, of course, you could capture it to mp3 or other formats if you want that's really up to you um, it's really when you're using your voice it's not necessary to capture uh, stereo you should never capture stereo um, also you know you have all these selections down here but 14 you know this is CD quality you can capture at that rate but it's not really necessary I find that that this is plenty for uh, capturing screen capture video and getting the kind of quality that I want Okay, so that was my one-click magnification. Right now you're viewing the crystal clear screen capture video, probably the best screen capture video quality that you've seen on YouTube, um, simply because the strategy that we have works. It really does. Now, the other things that I'm worrying about when I'm capturing my video are selecting the area to record and setting the dimensions. And as I mentioned, optimal dimensions for screen capture are uh, 800 by 600, 640 by 480, um, and, and under. I wouldn't go under 800 by 600, and generally I don't recommend recording at 800 by 600 anyway. And if you plan on combining your screen capture video with live motion video, just remember to avoid the flicker problems and the loss of quality. Always uh, capture it at 720 by 480 or less. And there's one other tick, trick, trick that we'll teach you so that you can avoid flicker and blurriness when combining live motion video with screen capture video in the Optimize Your Video package.